So now that we finished the first day of zero product property, we're going to be practicing a few more examples that may be a bit more challenging. But just a reminder, before we use the zero product property uh, to solve, you must rearrange each equation into standard form. So standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And we have to have all of that equal to zero. So for every single problem that we're looking at today, ask yourself, is this in standard form? So let's look at this first problem. Is this problem in standard form? No, it is not. So we need to rearrange the problem so that it is. So I have 16p minus 16. When I distribute here, I get plus or equals p squared plus 8p. Now, since p, is pos p squared is positive over on the right side, I'm deciding to bring over everything from the left to the right. So I have 0 equals p squared minus 8p plus 16. And now we can factor to use the 0 product property. So factors of 16 that add up to negative 8. So we have 4 and 4. And when we t off, notice how we get the same answer twice. So p equals 4 is our final answer. And it just so happens that it repeats twice. Now this is something that we'll begin to investigate next year when you're in Algebra 2. So we'll come back to examples like this when um, we do some factoring and solving uh, in class next year. Okay, so you can write down these two problems. Neither of them are in standard form. Uh, so if we look at the first problem, I have to distribute. So I'm going to do that first. So I have 3m squared plus m equals 2. So still not in standard form and set equal to 0. So we'll take away 2 on both sides. So I have 3m squared plus m minus 2 equals 0. So now if you're in a problem like this, you can definitely use the AC method if you want to, uh, if you want to factor. So I'm going to do some AC method on the side. I'm going to actually write it down here just so I and leaving some space. But actually, I don't need it to equal 0 because I just have to factor it. OK. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So factors of negative 6 that add up to 1. So I have 3 and then negative 2. So now we have 3m squared plus 3m minus 2m minus 2. So now if we group, what we can do, we can factor out our greatest common factor and have 3m, m plus 1, and then we can take out a negative 2, and have m plus 1, and then m plus 1 times 3m minus 2. So those are the factors. I'm going to bring back up to the top, m plus 1, 3m minus 2. equals 0. And now we are going to t off. And m equals negative 1 and m equals 2 thirds. Okay, so you could use some of the factoring methods that we've looked at throughout the, uh, the last unit and utilize them here. I would suggest just doing the factoring on the side like I had, uh, just so you can keep all the solving together on the top and then all the factoring stuff, that's your scratch work. Okay, let's look at this next one. So we have to distribute, and I have 9x plus x squared equals 8x plus 20. So my x squared over here is positive, so I think it's a better idea for me to bring everything all over to that side. 
So we have zero on the right side. And then on the left side, I'm going to rearrange it so it's in standard form. So I'm going to write my x squared first. Then I'm going to look at my x's plus x minus 20 equals zero. So now factors of negative 20 that add up to positive 1 are positive 5 and negative 4. So I know when I t off my two solutions are x equals negative 5 and x equals 4. So there's a bit more work involved in these particular problems, but again, same thing, rearrange into standard form. So this one's a little tricky because doesn't it look like it's factored on the left? Right? Doesn't this look like it's factored? But this number is not zero. We have negative three. So remember, in order to use the zero product property, we need to set factors equal to zero. So this may sound counterproductive. However, this is the only way we can go through and solve this problem. We have to actually multiply our first, outer, inner, and last. So here we go. 2x times x is 2x squared, outer, inner, last. And now we have to add 3 to both sides. So we have 2x squared, and then when I combine here, we have plus 3x plus 1. And that's what we have to now use at the zero product property with, right, is in this step. So you're going to have to sometimes multiply and simplify before you use the zero product property. And we could use the AC method if we want, or we can use our guess and check. Those are end up being the factors. So I know x equals negative 1 half and x equals negative 1. Okay. And now our last problem. This one looks super challenging. However, we just have to simplify everything first. So let's multiply what's on the left, and then let's multiply what's on the right. But this squared term here doesn't tell you to distribute that squared. It tells you to expand and multiply those two. So I have m squared plus 4m plus 4 after we simplified on the right. And then we have 2m squared outer. We have plus 3m and then plus 4m. And then plus 6. So now we have to rearrange. And notice how we have 2m, we have an m squared on both sides. But we notice how we have more m squareds over here. We have two of them. So I'm going to bring everything on the right all over to the left. So now I have m squared. I take away 4m. That cancels out, so we're left with still this 3m. And then when we take away the 4, we have plus 2. Now this is something that we can use the zero product property for. So the goal of this lesson is to make sure that we're simplifying everything before we use the zero product property.